Hi guys. So the topic for this video, are you healed? Um, I get emails all the time regarding um, my video about why didn't my ex return in the retrograde. And when I did this video, I was asking for everybody who would ever watch this video at any time answers. Um, but what I get emailed about this video, um, more often than not today also, um, I constantly get emails about this video is number one. Um, they always say to me, oh, the pain I see in your eyes um, in this video. Uh, I'm so sorry and things like that. Number one, um, thank you so much for your concern. Number two, that was um, nearly two years ago now. So I have come on a little from that video. So I'm not as hurt as I was or I used to be um, because I'm healing. And that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. So everybody who comments on that video or reaches out to me because of that video, um, thank you for your concern. And, you know, thanks for the love and care that you've shown to me. It really means a lot. And if you can relate to that video or if it resonates with you, um, hang in there. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. You know, um, you don't need to watch that video to watch this video. I just wanted to bring it up. Um, so I was talking to my friend. Um, he lives in Dubai. Hi, if you watch. I doubt he will. Um, but hi. Um, so we was talking about healing. And I said to him, well, have you really healed? Um, and he's like, yeah, I've healed. And I'm like, because what we tend to do is stick a bandaid over it. Out of sight, out of mind. Oh, I, I've healed from that. And then we'll bump into something that will open up that wound or rip that bandaid off. Um, so I said, hmm, I always get asked why I'm single. And my answer to my friend was because I'm not healed yet. I have a wound and I'm not trying to put a bandaid over it anymore. I am letting air get to it so that it can heal. Um, he's a doctor, <laughs> so I explained it to him that way. Um, so yeah, I'm not covering it up anymore. You can cover it up for so long and it'll do a little bit of the healing, but at some point the band has got to come off and you've got to sit within those feelings and deal with it basically um, to be able to heal fully. So I said, I'm single because I have an open wound. I will date or hopefully meet somebody when I am beautifully scarred, meaning when I'm healed. And I don't feel like that a person who's been broken is any less beautiful than somebody who has never been broken. I feel like they have more interesting stories to tell, more interesting perspectives. So, are you healed? Every time I do a video, the ice cream man comes. It's going to be my new soulmate or something, isn't it, in that van? It's been two years and this ice cream van comes around every time I do a video. <laughs> it's got to be a sign for somebody. So, are you healed? Do you think that saying I'm healed and I'm never letting anybody into my life again or you know um i'm not interested in love i'm never going to love again do you think that's a healed perspective um because i don't i feel like um 
you know, once we've healed, um, it's about we've learned to love ourselves, we've learned to respect ourselves and others, um, and make healthy boundaries um, that we don't allow others to cross. Um, so, boundaries. Um, you know, you may say, all the time I had self-respect because I thought I had self-respect and I thought I loved myself and I think it was from a place of ego and then the tower came in and brought my ego down to the ground. <laughs> thankfully, hindsight, I can say thankfully now, but yeah, I wasn't thankful at the time, let me tell you. So if you're going through it right now and you're like, why would I be thankful? I'm going through all this pain, then you're healing still, you know, your tower's coming down, let it fall all the way down, because then you can build yourself all the way up from the bottom up. Where's the better place to build from? Rock bottom. At least you're building on solid rock foundation. So it doesn't matter if you're at rock bottom. It's a great place to start building. So, yeah, where was I? So I was saying... Um, you're not fully healed if you are saying, that's it, um, I'm never going to love again. Yes, you're on track to heal because you're learning to put yourself first. And we will, it doesn't mean once you've healed that you'll never bump into that sort of encounter again. Um, we will bump into that over and over in our life. So this is why we need to learn respect and trust and boundaries um so when we run into these it's not a big tower moment when we run into these sort of lessons or these situations we can you know kindly say to people i'm not going to put up with that this is what i want and not in a nasty way either it's not like okay um you didn't do what I wanted you to do so you can off, you know, um, so it's learning the by respecting others, you are respecting yourself, but you are just not willing to accept anything that's not helpful or good for your soul or for your being anymore. You're not willing to drag yourself all the way down there. You've been down there. You've built up stronger. So I don't say, oh, I'm fully healed. I'm, I don't feel like I'm ready to date because I do not want to go and be hurtful to somebody else. And I'm not saying I've never have in my life. I probably have hurt somebody before. Um, so I don't want to go cause somebody else heartbreak. So I want to respect others and respect myself that I'm not ready to go forward and date yet so I understand that I'm healing so understanding where you're at in your healing process is all part of healing you know because we all get to a stage where you feel like oh well I'm over that person um I'm ready to go on to a next person some people may do it within days and think I'm ready to move on um so you soon find that the same situation arises you get into another relationship and maybe you're submissive so by submissive i mean you're extra helpful you do things to please them um you know maybe you're feeling like i don't actually want to do that but i'm going to do it to please them anyway or I'm going to do my best for them always, even if they don't do their best for me. That's not a, you know, a healthy place um, to be starting a relationship or even in a relationship, a well-formed one, even in a marriage. It's not in a, it's not healthy. Um, it won't last because eventually you'll get fed up and you'll get sick of it and it'll come the tower. So because you're not meant to um, just be the one giving. You've got to be receiving as well or nobody's gonna be happy. Even if you say, I'm a person who is a chef, so I love to cook. 
so I'm going to cook in this relationship. Maybe one day you're too tired to cook. You're going to need that other person to step in and give something back. And what if they're just like, no, nah, I don't want to cook. I'll order something. And you'll say, well, I'm on that diet and, um, you know, I want something cooking. But you've cooked for them always. And once you ask for that one thing in return and they're not ready to do it, it's that starts setting off you know, the alarm bells and red flags, and you should have had many before that, but if you were choosing to ignore them, you know, something else. Because like it or not, people in general prefer a partner with self-respect. So yes, it's okay to be helpful and you feel like I'm being loving by doing this. Um, by doing things for them, I'm being loving, I'm being caring, I'm showing that I care about them. Because maybe that's what you would like from a relationship. You would like somebody to actually show you and um, you just don't end up getting it because you've been the one giving and giving and giving. So that could be classed as submissive. Because, And I just explained that because maybe somebody might think submissive is um, like the extreme form of it doesn't have to be an extreme form it could just be something that you're doing subconsciously so yeah you know um going into a relationship and being submissive is not having healthy boundaries um it's deciding what you want and if somebody or how you're going to be treated so if somebody crosses that boundary then it's your place to say hi, I don't agree with that and, uh, you know, not argumentative and things like that, but it's your place to step in and say, you've crossed the line here, you've crossed one of my boundaries, I'm respecting yours, can you respect mine? Um, and hopefully you can work from there. If it's coming from a loving place, then hopefully you can work from there and that person won't do it again. If they keep doing it, then you'd want to ideally be healed enough to say, look, okay, I love me enough, I'm going to go out and um, I have to call it quits here until we can work out or arrange to treat each other better or we can just go our separate ways from here. Um, that sort of thing. So what are boundaries, healthy boundaries? Um, so another example, where I keep failing in my boundaries is I'll often meet people who will want my support, energy vampires, and you've probably come across them, you probably have so many in your life also, um, without even knowing it, until you realise what an energy vampire is and then you'll spot them a mile away. Um, I allow my compassion and it's not pity because I'm not looking down on them. I want to help them. So where I keep sort of allowing smudges on my boundary line is people coming in and stepping over it by needing my help, but then they don't know when to stop. And I often fail in saying, I'm tired right now, can you leave me the F alone? Until it gets to a point where I'm like at my end and I snap because I am a Scorpio. Did I tell you? <laughs> so yeah, um, I'll get to a point and then I'll snap. This is not healthy to do. I could tell people constantly, um, no, I, I don't want you um, to either speak to me right now or I don't want you coming around my home or calling my phone. You've crossed a line. I don't accept it. That sort of thing. I'm just giving a random example um, that hopefully you can relate to. Um, this it seems like something so small, but it builds up into a big issue because I'm failing at telling people immediately stop crossing boundaries. And this is why I know I'm still a wound. I'm not healed. But I've come a long way from the pain 
that you guys saw in that first video. So that's what I'm trying to explain. I still know I'm not ready and I'm not going to lie to myself or hurt somebody else just for the sake of being with somebody. Yes, sometimes I want to be with somebody and nobody offers, but hey. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I want to be with somebody, but it's just like I've got to a place where I love myself enough to know that I can't allow somebody in yet because I'm still failing on some things. I'm still, some areas of my life still need work. My empathy for others. I mean, it helps me in this job um, because I read energy very well. Um, but when people sort of, they'll, play on it my empathy even more because energy vampires maybe they're not even doing it maliciously but they see your energy your light and they're drawn to it and they're sort of sucking it out of you sucking it out of you and this is what I want to personally sort of get over before I start dating again because I keep getting asked why are you single so yeah that's what I told my friend because I'm an open wound. I will date when I am beautifully scarred. And I have lots of scars anyway on my body. And I just think they make me so unique. And I remember when I first got the scar on my chest, which many of you have probably seen, I was thinking, oh my gosh, it's right in the middle of my chest. I'm a woman and things like that, you know. Um, but as I watched it heal, I was like, oh my God, guess what? It caused this much or the body is just like amazing. It really sort of opened my eyes to like the amazement of the human body. Like, wow, it was just amazing how it healed and scar uh, you know, uh, scarred over. Like I, nobody did anything to it. I thought, okay, it's gonna need like stitches and things. No, it did it itself. I just had to take the band-aid off and let it get air and it healed itself. So yeah, just me rambling on. So I often do that, you know, go off on a different conversation. I don't mean to, I try to um, stick on what was in my mind and what I'm downloading at one time, but I don't. I don't. Like, when I first wanted to start this video, I wanted it to be about, um, do you feel that you are woke? And the thing is, it's like, I was downloading information all day into my head and I was like writing it out and then I was like, well, these videos will come up like this and this and this. Um, so, but I didn't want, I don't like to sit and read script. I think it comes across better when it's coming out of me naturally. So this is why we've ended up with this light and this angle and this chain. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just think, just know yourself while healing. This is what we're supposed to do. Get to know yourself again. Who do you want to be? Who did you want to be when you was a kid? What hurts do you have from a childhood that you carry with you into adulthood? In, instead of, you know, saying I'm healed. Okay, I found a new boyfriend today. And he hurt me. I broke up next week. Oh, I found a new boyfriend. Because you're just repeating cycles. Um, I, I don't agree with immediately jumping into relationships straight afterwards because it creates these cycles that we're in where you'll then hurt somebody else and then that person goes on to hurt somebody else. So I just don't want to hurt anybody else. I want to not only love myself, I want to love others and respect others. So that's what I'm working on within me. So while healing, understand that it's going to hurt while healing. 
just is. It hurts. Maybe you're having such a laugh and then one day you just randomly burst out crying and you're upset and you're like, what? <laughs> Why am I still thinking about that? I thought I was over that. Or maybe you're watching a film and you're happy, you know, you've had a great time with your friends or family or by yourself and then you start watching a movie or something and boom, you burst into tears or, you know, you feel hurt. Maybe it's triggered something that was under the band-aid is what I'm trying to say. Taking it off and allowing yourself to sit in that energy and understand what you're feeling in that energy. Maybe this time you got hurt by a girlfriend, um, but say initially the real hurt could have been from childhood. A childhood friend hurt you and left you and moved away through no fault of their own, but you didn't understand that as a child. So when this girlfriend left, it brought up those same hurts and triggered those same fears. Um, so, you know, you want to look at what's hurting you. What are your fears? You know, and then look at what your strengths, you know, and what you want to improve and how you would like to be at the end of it and what you're actually looking for in a partner or in yourself, in a friend. This is um, what I ask of myself. What would I like to be towards somebody else? What would I want? And then I'm trying to build myself up until that. I mean, you'll see memes and things that say, oh, well, I will look after my man if he's down on his luck and can't get a job. I'm going to be there to look after him. And then you'll see others that say, um, I don't want a guy or a girl until, unless she's got a big expensive car, her own house and her own life together. And they're sat there on their mum's couch. Anyway, um, I don't think either of these points of view um, are correct from my current perspective. I have felt probably both of those things in the past. Um, but what I'm feeling now is that Yes, if I'm in a relationship and he lost his job and he's putting into me and he's putting into our home, into our family, into our kingdom, um, then if I'm the breadwinner, I'm the breadwinner. I'm not even going to see it as a separate thing that I need to um, provide him with money. I'm going to give him some money to survive. I don't see it as a separate thing. I see we're both putting into our kingdom. If he's not putting in at that time, maybe I won't be putting it in at a different time. But um, I don't also think like I'm only going to go out with a man who has a car and a fancy house. Um, those things can't buy you love either. So that's not a requirement for me. Somebody who has their stuff together, I would prefer them, like, well-heeled as a person, um, you know, good morals. A good moral compass I would prefer over a sports car. I would prefer loyalty over um, somebody just paying for me constantly. And some people will say, yeah, well, I'd rather cry in an Audi. I'd rather not cry. I'd rather be with somebody who's making me laugh, making me smile, making me happy. Building a strong foundation for this castle. I want that. So, are you healed? Do you... Think that you're healed? Are you negative about love or are you still open to love? Because on my journey and healing, I still feel like 
I want to love other human beings and I still want to receive love from other human beings. And I understand there's still going to be people who want to sort of abuse my trust. So do I think I'm fully healed? No, no, <laughs> no. Um, I do see that I will get there. I will, I will get there and I can't wait to get there. I'm going to be happy once I'm there. Once I'm fully healed, do I feel like I will never run into that sort of test again? Um, I do believe it will come up and it's up to me to understand that my boundaries are in place for a reason. So, you know, this castle that I was talking about, totally made up, um, you know, it's got boundaries around it, but it also has gates that I can let people in. Because previously as a Scorpio, um, when I'll put up my boundaries, I'll put them up so high that nobody can come in at all. But then you're left on your own in there. So that isn't healthy either. So I understand and my perspective has changed. And without the scar, without the wound, I wouldn't have got here. Um, so am I mad at what happened to me? No. Am I mad at, at an ex? No. <laughs> They've all taught me, um, I think there's a song, what's it called? Like, say something like, um, one taught me patience, one taught me this, one taught me that. Yeah, probably so. That's probably what happened. I was, I am who I am because of the things I've been through. Not a particular person teaching me anything, but um, how I'm getting up from these um, situations, these hurts, these heartbreaks, these wounds. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely feel like I'm on the right track to healing. And I hope you guys are too. I don't want you to worry about me um, because that video is from, like I say, nearly two years ago. Um, but that was like the downfall of my ego. And if you're healing and you're at a place where you're like, um, my ex is this and this and this and you're bad mouthing them or I'm never going to love again and things like that, that's, that's your walls coming up and your ego. So to truly heal this time, let your tower come all the way down. Don't try and prevent it. Don't try and stop it. So you may feel like, oh, I just found out my ex cheated on me um, or my boyfriend cheated on me and now I'm going through this healing. But first of all, I'm going to go out with my girls. I'm going to cheat with his friend or whatever crazy things people do. Um, you don't need to try and stick a band-aid on it straight away and try and prevent the hurt. The hurt is okay. And it's okay for your tower to come down. It's okay for you to hit rock bottom. Go start building at rock bottom. Who do you want to be? I remember at one point, um, I felt so sad. But I bought some like sticky pads, just like you can rip them off and they're sticky. And yeah, those sticky pads. And I wrote on it like successful or businesswoman, powerful, strong independent i wrote on it things i wanted to be and i thought i was all those things before that but when you're in that hurt and i just wanted a reminder every day um so i just stuck it on i've heard people doing this with manifesting about um a million dollar check and things i think it was jim Carrey who did that put a million dollar check in his wallet but i did this with um, words of that I wanted to be, what I inspired to be, um, so that in, you know, it was something psychological. So even if you don't believe in all the rest of the stuff, it was something psychological every day. Um, these subliminal messages coming into my head, because it doesn't mean that I would even get up and read them every day. I would pass them. So they'd pass my eyes. And it's like, 
you've heard of subliminal messages in adverts so things would will flash up on the screen and you don't even know they're there but your brain's caught them so that's what kind of things i was doing and just the kind of thing that i'm saying to you to try and help you get up and help you get some ideas of what you might want to try that what might work for you while you're picking yourself up so yeah stages of um healing sorry <laughs> you know stages of healing and giving over your power to somebody else so you may say i've been her and they're the only one who can make me happy you're giving your power away you know or even the things i would describe in being submissive it's giving your power away um you may have even heard of treat them mean keep them keen because that's somebody giving their power to you and you ignoring them and maybe this person will keep texting you and keep texting you and you're like i'm so mean to this person or i just ignore them but they still keep coming and texting me um so that's somebody who's giving their power away um without realizing and being submissive and um hopefully they th they think they're trying to be helpful but they do have an end goal themselves so yeah i realized i don't need to try and help everybody in the world and when enough's enough say it's enough because sometimes i used to just play the fool and just if somebody would lie to me i'd pick it up straight away and i'd be like okay and just be like well they're not harming anybody it's just a little white lie and it's only to me you know it was like sort of putting myself as unworthy to tell the truth to why are you going to waste my time and try lie to me why are you wasting both of our time trying to lie to me i can read you like a book why are you trying to lie to me so but i used to let it slide i used to let it slide and what i'm saying is sometimes i still do that's why i know i'm not fully healed because um i don't want to be like to people stop chatting Shit. you know um because i understand as well they they're on their own path but it's good to understand that people are on their own path but you've also got to understand that if they're on their own path and they're trying to pick themselves up too they need to know that that their pointless lies are getting them nowhere with you so when they come into your house or your energy they have to step up their vibration because you're not stepping yours down and it's just as simple as that and yeah that's what i'm working on and um yeah i'll date when i'm healed and hopefully that person will say you know oh you know my scars compliment me because then i'm a whole person and i am who i am but i'm a whole person and i'm not trying to damage them in any other way so yeah that's that's where i'm at that's my points of view on healing sorry so yeah that's that guys if you found it helpful or you just listen to me natter agree disagree let me know in the comments i'll probably stick something in the description box for you guys and good luck